Hey, don't bring your daughter here. The manager snapped at me with his usual mean face when I attended the company's anniversary party with my wife. My wife at 20 might look like my daughter, but to me, she is irreplaceable. Age doesn't matter. However, my senior manager, who doesn't like me, seemed to enjoy making such remarks. Sensing the atmosphere, my wife looked slightly uncomfortable. Seeing me unsure of what to do next, my wife slowly started introducing herself. Suddenly, the president next to us turned pale and spoke up loudly. My name is Michael Moore. I'm turning 50 this year, though people say I look younger. I can't beat time no matter how hard I try. I'm nowhere near my 20s in terms of energy. At work, I serve as a manager, supporting my boss, Daniel Anderson. Daniel seems to be frustrated with my mediocrity, always harassing me in one way or another. Despite being busy with daily tasks, Daniel's pressure makes my days tough. Still, it's a relief to come home every day to my charming wife. My wife, Maria, is 20 years old, and there's a 30-year age gap between us. Marriage was the last thing on my mind initially. Maria and I met by chance on the street. Walking home from work, I saw a woman collapse face first in front of me. I rushed over to help, but she had a severe forehead injury and was unconscious. I called an ambulance, and at the hospital, they found a serious illness. Fortunately, because it was detected early, surgery fully cured her. That woman was Maria. Having saved her life, Maria insisted on thanking me, and we went out for meals a few times. At first, I saw Maria as a daughter, but the more I got to know her, the more I realized she was mature and attractive. However, the age gap bothered me, so I rejected her advances multiple times. In the end, I relented on the condition that we date with future marriage in mind. We have the company's anniversary party tomorrow, and I plan to take my wife. On the day of the party, and I nervously put on my suit. Are you nervous? Maria asked. Of course I am. It's the first time I'm attending with you in front of everyone. Aren't you nervous? No, I'm used to this kind of thing. One reason I fell in love with Maria is her always confident demeanor. Despite the 30-year age gap, she's remarkably composed and unafraid in any situation. I truly respect Maria for that. We got into the car and headed to the party venue. Maria went to the restroom, so I decided to explore the venue a bit. As soon as I entered, Daniel hurried over to me. You finally made it. I thought you weren't coming. So where's your wife? She's in the restroom now. Since you didn't invite anyone to the wedding, this is the first time. We finally get to see her, Daniel said with a smirk. This teasing is exactly why we didn't have a wedding. After chatting for a while, Maria returned from the restroom. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, did you find your way all right? She asked. Yes, and could you introduce this gentleman? Maria turned to Daniel asking about him. He's the manager of my department, I replied. Maria's expression shifted from relaxed to serious as she greeted him. Nice to meet you. Hey, don't bring your daughter here. Apparently, Daniel thought Maria was my daughter. It's understandable since I could have a daughter her age, but I felt it wasn't good to leave the misunderstanding, so I confess that Maria is my wife. Daniel's eyes widened in surprise, and then he burst into loud laughter. Come on, you're joking, right? This young girl is your wife. Maria is indeed 20 years old, but she's a wonderful woman. No way a 20-year-old doesn't know anything about the world, Daniel scoffed, making condescending remarks about Maria. I can tolerate unfair treatment or insults directed at me, but I would never forgive anyone for insulting my beloved Maria. Still, it was the company's anniversary party, and the president was just behind Daniel. I knew I couldn't make a scene, so I struggled to contain my anger. However, Daniel, either ignorant or indifferent to my feelings, continued to insult Maria. Marrying a 50-year-old guy. Your wife must be crazy. What are you trying to say? She must have married you for money, right? Just admit it. How can you say such a thing? 
I know some people marry for money, but that's not the case with Maria. Then what does she do for work? If you're saying that, she must be making a lot of money, right? Well, Maria takes care of the house. See, I knew it, Daniel said, looking pleased as if he had proven his point. There's a reason Maria stays at home. When I met her, she collapsed and had to undergo surgery. Due to that, she doesn't have the stamina to work outside. Maria works hard at home, handling household chores and doing some small jobs. Even after explaining this, Daniel seemed unconvinced. Work from home. It's probably all useless stuff. That's not true. Maria significantly supports our household. Your desperation makes it even more unbelievable. It seemed nothing I said could get through to him. I glanced at Maria and saw she was visibly upset. She never gets angry or shows displeasure in public, no matter how bad things are. Daniel's behavior was clearly over the line, but convincing him further was pointless, and I didn't want to ruin the rest of the party with this mood. I gently took Maria's hand and tried to leave Daniel, but he tried to stop me. Where are you going? Are you running away because you can't come up with any more excuses? No, I just think it's pointless to keep talking. What's that? Just admit you're defeated and running away with your tail between your legs. My anger reached its peak, and I unknowingly squeezed Maria's hand tightly. Noticing this, Maria looked up at me with concern. Then she turned around and suddenly began introducing herself to Daniel. Sorry for the late introduction. I'm Maria Moore. I know you said that earlier. Young folks just don't get the atmosphere. Daniel laughed, but the person next to him had a different reaction. The president, who had been standing beside Daniel without me noticing, was looking at us, pale-faced. Maria Moore, are you the same person who recently became a popular novelist? Yes, that's me. I'm glad you know my work. Actually, Maria recently debuted as a new novelist. She was originally in college, but due to her illness, it became too difficult to attend classes, so she took a leave of absence and eventually withdrew. By then, we had already decided to get married, and I told her she didn't need to work, but she insisted on working. Given her limited stamina for working outside, we considered jobs she could do at home. That's how she became a novelist. Maria loves mystery novels and has written short stories as a hobby. She was embarrassed to show her work to anyone, but once she started writing, she couldn't stop. Now she spends every day in front of her computer. Recently, she wrote a novel that won a major award. Anyone who likes novels might have seen Maria's name before. Since she writes under her real name, people often ask, are you the novelist? Apparently, the president is a fan of mystery novels and recognized her name, a novelist and a mystery novelist at that. Why didn't you say so sooner? I asked Maria. I wasn't sure if I should mention it, so I kept quiet. You were just trying to protect me, right? Thank you. Daniel, who had been looking down on Maria, was genuinely shocked to learn she was a novelist. Learning that her first novel won a major award left him at a loss for words. It's understandable since no one expects to have a novelist in their midst. However, Daniel, still in disbelief, demanded proof that Maria was indeed a novelist. There could be another novelist with the same name. Show me the proof, Maria. Daniel, stop it. That's disrespectful to her. It's okay. It's natural to have doubts. Proof, right? Maria said, pulling out a business card from her small bag and handing it to Daniel. I had insisted she carry those cards, and it turned out to be the right decision. Although this wasn't the ideal situation, proving Maria's credibility was most important. Daniel took the card and just stood there, stunned. A business card can be faked. This doesn't convince me, Daniel said, not wanting to admit Maria was a novelist. His shaking voice betrayed his distress. In the end, Daniel didn't acknowledge Maria and avoided us for the rest of the evening, mingling with others instead. A few days had passed since the incident and I was back to my usual work routine. 
Daniel, who usually approached me with a smug expression, hadn't spoken to me since the company's anniversary party. I noticed him glancing at me while I worked, but I chose not to engage despite feeling his gaze. Then, one day, a major incident occurred. Our company deals with publishing information, and Daniel had sent an insulting email about a famous novelist to the author himself by mistake. This was an unacceptable mistake. However, since the email was already sent, the only option was to apologize. What should I do? I meant to send it to a colleague. There's no use lamenting. Let's go apologize. I accompanied Daniel to the famous novelist's house. Naturally, the author was extremely angry and expressed a desire to publish his work elsewhere. This novelist was a key figure for our company, and losing him would be disastrous. We tried to persuade him, but he wouldn't even listen. We sincerely apologize for this incident. We will ensure this never happens again, Daniel said. Sending me an email insulting me is unacceptable. Get out of here immediately. Despite our efforts, the novelist's anger didn't subside, and we had to return to the office. Daniel, usually confident and harsh with novelists, seemed deeply depressed. Seeing him so dejected almost made me feel sorry for him. However, my anger from the anniversary party was still fresh, so I didn't offer any comfort. I had no intention of excessively supporting him either. Some might say I should help, but I couldn't forgive him for insulting Maria. Given all the unfair treatment I'd received from him, I felt justified in not helping. But when I shared this with Maria, her response was entirely different from mine. He's in trouble, isn't he? You should help him, Maria said. But he looked down on you, I replied. Yes, it was unpleasant, but I don't hold any grudges. Despite all the harsh words, Maria said calmly. Maria wasn't bothered and wanted to help Daniel if possible. Honestly, after our apology visit, where the novelist was furious, I had almost given up. Senior management was very angry too, but it seemed like there was nothing we could do. I thought we'd just have to find another novelist. But then, the furious novelist showed up at our office. No one expected him to come, especially without an appointment, so everyone was shocked. Even more surprising, he looked cheerful, not angry at all. Daniel nervously approached him. What brings you here today? Well, I heard you know Maria Moore, the novelist said. Maria told me that criticism is common and to use it as motivation. The novelist, who had been furious, was now smiling and talking to Daniel. Apparently, he knew Maria, which was news to me. It was astonishing that a newcomer and a veteran novelist knew each other and that Maria's advice had such an impact. Honestly, the entire company had nearly given up and no one expected such a turn of events. Daniel, unsure of how to react, continued talking with the novelist. After some casual conversation, the novelist left. What just happened? Do you know anything about this? I asked Maria. No, I just found out myself. I see. So your wife helped us out? I said. When I asked Maria about it at home, she explained that they had known each other for a long time through online writing communities and had met at offline gatherings. They still occasionally kept in touch, and when Maria reached out, the novelist agreed to forgive Daniel this time. I was unaware of Maria's connections and amazed at her willingness to help Daniel. Seeing her carefree smile, I fell in love with her all over again. A few days later, Daniel approached me differently than usual. Instead of his usual smug look, he seemed unusually humble. Can I have a moment? I want to thank your wife for what happened the other day, Daniel said. Yes, I appreciate her covering up my embarrassing mistake. Daniel expressed his desire to show appreciation to Maria. After some hesitation, I consulted with Maria, and she said she'd love to meet Daniel again. So we accepted his invitation. Daniel took us to a high-end restaurant where it costs nearly $200 per person. I couldn't help but wonder if we deserved such a lavish thank you. This place is delicious. I'm glad we came, Maria said. Right, 
It's my favorite spot, Daniel replied. It feels good to be rewarded for doing a good deed. Daniel and Maria chatted happily, enjoying their meal. After a few beers, Daniel began to open up. Maybe I've been too harsh on you, I'm sorry, Daniel admitted, fiddling with the ice in his glass. What's this all of a sudden? I guess I was jealous. You handle everything so smoothly, and I, well, I lack balance, Daniel said. Perhaps Daniel had struggles and stresses I couldn't understand. Even if he didn't mean to be mean, his lack of personal balance might have led to his negative actions. Seeing this unexpected side of Daniel made me feel a bit more optimistic about work. Now a year has passed since that day. I'm still working under Daniel, but one thing has changed, our relationship. Since that incident, Daniel has been inviting me to meals more often. During busy times, he brings me snacks and energy drinks from the store without me asking. When my workload is heavy, he readily offers to help. Looks like you've got a lot of work today. I'll help you with half of it, Daniel would say. You're being unusually kind. Is it going to snow today? Of course not. Not being able to look around like this is all thanks to Maria. If she hadn't helped Daniel back then, we wouldn't have built this good relationship. It turns out Daniel wasn't such a bad person after all, and his reputation around the office has improved. He used to be the type to complain and get angry over small things, making the office atmosphere terrible. But now everyone seems to enjoy their work, and Daniel himself appears to be enjoying his job. This whole experience showed me how much a person's demeanor and way of speaking can change the overall work environment. Work is still busy, but I'm managing to cope. To show my gratitude to Maria, I successfully requested a week off, and starting tomorrow, Maria and I are going on our first trip in a long time. You told me you were busy. Is it okay? Maria asked. Yes, I made sure everyone was okay with it. We're heading overseas. We could have stayed in the U.S., but I thought traveling abroad would inspire Maria's new novel. Right now, we're packing for the trip. It's been a while since our last international trip, so I'm a bit nervous. But seeing Maria happily packing makes me glad I pushed for this vacation. Of course, we'll bring back plenty of souvenirs for everyone at work. Whatever happens in the future, I believe I can overcome anything as long as I have Maria by my side.